This is Ben with bkashaaudio.com. In this video, we'll take a tour of Helio Workstation. Helio Workstation is an open source, free music sequencer software. It's cross-platform, and it features a unique method of keeping track of different versions of your compositions using essentially the same type of version control that coders use when they make programs. It features a very clean user interface and surprisingly it's developed by one person. Let's take a look at it. On my screen I have Helio Workstation open. If you click your name in the top left hand corner it'll give you access to this page where you can open a new project, start a new project, or open a recent project. If we click Settings, which is the next option down, this gives us access to changing the default language, changing the user interface theme. We can also configure our audio device and what's used to render the user interface. Beneath Settings, we have Instruments. The Instruments panel allows us to load a VST instrument and assign it to a layer so that we can have a sound other than piano. By default, the Helio piano is loaded, but if I wanted to load something like Helm, a synth, I would click it, select Instantiate, and we now have an instance of Helm sitting under our Instruments category. If you'd like to search for a VST that's not in the list, you can click on the Search button and select it. If we click on the caret to the right of instruments, it gives us a context menu where we can choose to reload the plugins list, scan our plugins directory, or we can select from our most recent uh, plugins that we've accessed. Beneath instruments, I have my Helm instance. And if I click on it, you can see I have the capability to adjust the routing. And I can click on these cables and route them as I see fit. And if we click on the caret to the right of our instantiated VST, we can choose to delete the instance of it. Beneath the instruments category will be our project. So my project is called Tutorial Project. Within this window, I can change the name of the project if I like. So let's set it to today's date, which is the 5th. So we'll say Tutorial Project 4518. I'm the author, and let's say this project is for a tutorial. And let's make that copyright 2018. It lists the length of our session when we began it, how many different revisions we have, etc. At the bottom of the window, we have a button with triple dots, and if we click that, we see a menu that allows us to add a layer, which is one of these items right here, ARP, Bass, Counterpoint, Melodic. These are all layers, and if you want to add more, you can select Add Layer. We can add an automation lane for a layer. We can import external MIDI. We can select to render our composition out to any of these formats. If you select Refactor, this will allow you to transpose up or transpose down the composition. If we select Unload Project, that will unload the project from this side panel. You can have multiple projects loaded at the same time. So if we select Unload, that will disappear and you can also choose to delete the project. Now this is one way you can access that menu. The other way you can access it is by clicking the caret beside the project name and you can access all of these same items. Beneath the name of the project is a section called versions. This is the version control system for Helio Workstation and if you've never used version control before it's fairly simple to use. This switch turns it on and off. By default, version control is set to on. 
Now we have changes that we made listed here in the project changes area. And it says that I've changed these items, the license, the title, and the description. We want to commit these changes to our repository. To do that, you can select the change or you can use Control A, which will select everything in that window. And we'll click the floppy disk icon. This will allow us to enter in a commit message. So we'll say change project name, updated description, and click commit. We can see we have a new entry in our revision tree. And what we want to do next is click the push icon to push that to our repository. Now, if you made a change and you don't like the change that you made and want to go back to a previous version, you can select it, select checkout revision, and you can pull down that revision. But I like what I did, so I'll check this out. And finally, this button allows us to reset any changes we've made that we don't want to keep. So if I make a change that shows up in Project Changes, I can click this button and it will clear them out of the Project Changes field. Beneath Versions, we have our individual layers. By default, you start out with ARPS, Counterpoint, and Melodic. I've added a base layer here. If we select ARPS, our arpeggios are highlighted in the user interface. If we select base, our base is highlighted, and so on. If we'd like to view all layers at once, you can double click twice with the right mouse button, and you'll see that they all highlight here in the left pane, and they are all highlighted in the interface. To the right of each layer, there's a caret, which opens a context menu. We can choose to select all of our MIDI, change the track color, rename the layer, mute the layer, or delete it. At the bottom of the user interface is a global overview. The global overview can be clicked on and dragged around. If I zoom in or out using the mouse wheel, you can see it changes. And I can drag it around to see different parts of my composition. To the right of the global overview is a play button, as well as the total time of the track and the current position of the playhead. You can initiate playback by clicking the play button or by pressing the space bar or by pressing the Enter key on your keyboard. To the right of the screen, we have an additional toolbar. Clicking the hamburger menu allows you to add an annotation to your composition, a time signature change. Beneath that is our pointer tool, which allows us to select notes and drag them around. We then have a cut tool which allows us to slice notes into multiple pieces. The way that this functions isn't exactly clear to me. I've been able to get it to work sometimes and sometimes it doesn't work. Beneath that is a lasso tool which will allow us to select a certain group of MIDI events. Beneath the lasso tool is a hand tool, and this hand tool allows us to drag the entire timeline around as if we were dragging the global view down here. Now you can also drag the entire timeline around by holding down the spacebar and clicking with your left mouse button, or you can middle click using your mouse wheel 
and this will also allow you to drag the entire timeline around. Beneath that, we have a tool that will allow us to close a gap between MIDI events. So you see this black line in the interface. If I click, drag, and release, it will remove that space from between MIDI events. I'll use Control Z to undo that. Beneath that, we have a tool that allows us to insert space between MIDI events. We have a different sort of gray colored line. You can click, drag, and it will insert space. We then have our magnifying glass tools to zoom in, zoom out, but you can use the center mouse wheel on your mouse to do the same thing. We have an undo option here, but you can also use the keyboard shortcut Control Z, a redo option, but you can use the keyboard shortcut Control Y. The speaker allows us to take some MIDI events and adjust the dynamics of them. So if I select some MIDI notes, I can raise the overall volume of all the MIDI events. I can adjust the dynamics of all the MIDI events. So if I have this set low, there won't be as many dynamics. And if I set this center slider all the way up, it will make the performance more dynamic. And this last slider is yet another dynamic tweak that does sort of this, a similar thing to the previous one. So this one sort of raises and lowers the overall volume, but there is a change in the relationship between velocities, where this one seems to just affect the relationship between velocities. I haven't been able to find any explanation of this in the uh, documentation on the GitHub page or on the website, so this is the best guess that I have. There's also a play button so you can preview the changes that you make. And it'll play just that section and you can pause it at any time. And this button will allow you to undo the changes that you've made. Beneath the speaker is a tool that allows us to move notes between layers easily. If I select this group of notes and I want to move it to a different layer. So right now I have my ARP selected. I want to move it to bass. I can select it and it'll move it to the base layer. I'll undo that change. Now, this next tool is interesting. It's an arpeggiation tool. And if I enter a note into the timeline, so let's go to our arps and let's enter in a chord. If I want to take this chord and arpeggiate it, I can select it select the arpeggio tool and there are some predefined predefined arpeggio types we can choose from so as you click them it'll automatically preview that section and again you can undo everything that you did with this button beneath that we have our copy our paste and then a trash can to delete notes. So if I select some ARPs, I can delete them. Again, Control C, Control V, that works for copying and pasting, and Control X works for cutting notes. So you can use those if you don't have a full-size keyboard. Maybe you prefer to do that, but I rather use the shortcuts. Note entry in Helio is fairly straightforward and easy. Um, if I select my melodic layer, there's a couple different ways you can enter notes. You can double click and you'll get a single note. Now right now, it brings up this interface with different chord qualities. It's a circular interface. If I just click and hold in the middle and drag up and down, I can change the pitch of the single note. And if I just want a single note, I can click the plus sign, and I have a single note. If I want a chord, I can double click and select the chord quality. Oh, 
which is pretty great. So if I want a major chord, I have major chord. If I want a minor chord, I have minor chord and so on. If I don't want to enter notes like that, and I just want to draw them in, if you hold down the control key on your keyboard and click and drag, you can create a note of any length without popping up the circular interface. So this method of uh, composition is fairly fast and easy and it's enjoyable to do. Um, I prefer the way that this works over the way that a lot of other MIDI sequencers and DAWs function. Um, now, once you do a composition in this, you may want to mix it, you may want to add different instruments. And luckily there's a way to get the MIDI in here out. And that's by selecting the project and selecting render and export to MIDI. Once you export your MIDI from Helio Workstation, you can import it into any DAW. You can import it into uh, Arter, for instance, and it will come in as a multi-track MIDI uh, file, and you can then assign VSTs to each individual track. So if you're somebody that likes to compose, um, sort of the simplistic nature of just composing using a piano sound with this great interface uh, allows you to work very quickly, and then you can bring that MIDI into an external DAW and tweak and further develop your song as you go along. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out bkashaaudio.com for more tutorials.